Sami Daku is the Director of Policy, Strategy and Communications at the OSP. He's on the line to explain the OSP's processes and what they think of this latest development. Uh, Mr. Daku, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, Bernard. So I am working my way from the back. Um, yesterday, Mami Tiwa Yoko told the press that she's returning your docket because the, o the AG has advised her that there's nothing really to investigate. AG says his advice to Yoko was based on your previous work as OSP, as an office. So it's almost like we are back to square one because the OSP began the investigation and it's come back to your table. Is this an accurate rendition of the matter or is somebody misunderstanding the OSP? First of all, I think that matter that has happened is, is very clear and I'm happy that at least you've given a background to it. Um, let me start with what um, Yoko said yesterday, that they are going to return the docket to the OSP. That is even not accurate. They've long returned the docket to OSP. And they returned the docket to OSP with an explanation that they've been advised by the AG not to investigate. Remember, we didn't say to prosecute, not to investigate. So the docket has already been brought to OSP. So I don't understand why Yoko will say they are now going to bring the docket back to OSP. That, that's the first point I want to make. Wonderful. Then the second point... Go ahead. The second point I want to make is this whole idea that the docket that OSP sent to Yoko was uh, baseless. If you indulge me, I'm going to be a bit detailed, although we are not supposed to do this, but our point is that if there's no appetite to want to investigate or prosecute, tell the people of Ghana there's no appetite. But don't try to put a blame on the OSP. What the OSP did was to have given you all the tools that you need to be able to fish. What they are saying now seems or suggests to us is like saying that we should have added a fish. Now, the docket that OSP sent to Yoko, these are the details. It's a docket. When we say a docket, I'll break it down so that everybody understands what a docket means. A docket is simply a file that contains lots of documents. So what were the documents that we sent to Yoko? Now, before I come to this one, I also do the first one, which is the AG saying that we had cleared Cecilia the power of any offense. That is also not accurate because OSP has never cleared Cecilia Dapa. When you say you have cleared someone, it means that you've investigated and come to a conclusion that no offense has been committed. So, for instance, there was a case against uh, the Honorable Atachia where we investigated and realized that there was no case. So, OSP even has a track record that after its investigation, it will tell Ghanaians what it found. And we've done so in many other cases. If you check the former Minister of State at the Finance, Charles Dubois, uh, we came out to see what we thought of it. If you check the wealthy businessman who attempted to allegedly bribe the MPs, we came out to say where we got to and why we couldn't continue because MPs refused to cooperate with us and, uh, and, and serve as a witness for us to go to court. In this matter, what we said was that as we were investigating her for corruption, it appeared to us from every evidence we were seeing that it fell largely in the province of money laundering and that a money laundering investigation would be most appropriate to be able to come to a conclusion of the matter and not corruption. And so we stopped and then transferred the case to the institution that has been mandated by law to investigate money laundering. Now, the docker we sent to you who had 20 statements caution statements from witnesses in America and in Ghana. Now, the docket also went with a cover letter explaining why we are of the opinion that they should be looking out for money laundering, including a reduction of some of the findings from the FBI. Now, this docket contains statements, for instance, I'll give a classical example. Madame Dapai and the husband, when they were being interrogated by the OSB, said that Part of the money that we retrieved from her residence was brought to them from the United States of America. So we had to pursue the money. 
Now, we pursued the money and discovered who it was in the United States of America. We did a conference interrogation with that person and then Ms. Dapa and the husband. Now, from the interrogation, the woman in question in abroad did, did say that it is not true that the monies that they are claiming that um, was from America is actually from her. Secondly, she also say, said that they dis, they, there was disagreement between them as to how many times she has brought them money and how much money she brought to them. Whilst they said A, she said B. And thirdly, the lady was also queried as to whether she had declared the money she allegedly brought to them when she was entering Ghana and when she was leaving the United States. With the, with, 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 with the force of threat to report her to the FBNRS, she confessed that no, she did not declare. So, this that I've narrated to you is part of the docket that went to Iyoku. All this I'm saying to you, they are on the file. Now, let's begin with something small before you come in. If anybody is minded to find a predicate offense that they've been bundling around, from what I've just narrated to you, you can find a predicate offense to trigger section 1-3 of the Anti-Money Laundering Act. Do you know why we keep saying section 1-3 of the Anti-Money Laundering Act? Because if you go into the Constitution of Ghana, I think Article 284 or so, it actually talks about unexplained wealth, that if a politician's asset surpasses their lawful income, then they ought to explain. However, when they were passing the OSP law, the lawmaker took out the provision on unexplained wealth order. What it means is that if OSP is investigating you for corruption, the burden at all points is on the OSP to prove how you corrupted yourself. Instead of the popular ones that exist in Kenya, that exist in Sierra Leone, that exist even in Nigeria. So what happens is that all that we as investigators and prosecutors need to do is to be able to demonstrate to the court that we have checked your lawful income. And even if you had worked for 20 years, you couldn't have acquired the assets that you have acquired. The burden then now shifts to you, the accused, to explain to us or the court how you acquired those wealth. That provision has, was taken out of the OSP Act. But Ghana is not without a remedy. That same provision we need under the OSP Act what has been put also under the Anti-Money Laundering Act, which is the Section 1-3 of the Anti-Money Laundering Act, where if you are investigating a suspect for money laundering, you then will be able to also confiscate any asset which is not proportionate to their lawful income. So when they say that there is no predicate offense, I've just given you one example of that. The other example, which is on the docket, is that Madame Dapa and the husband and everybody claim that part of the money or the money was from the deceased brother. Now, OSP went to a great length of establishing that that cannot be true. And what did we do? We even went to the factory that Mrs. Dapa said was owned by the deceased brother. And we were able to show, including pictures and everything, that the factory has, been, has not been operational. And even if it was operational, it couldn't generate the money she claimed that. A deceased brother had. Now, all these things are well documented and on the file. And the point we made was that we, as OSP, do not have the power to investigate money laundering. So you, as Yoko, please take it up and then do your investigation and then see what you can do. We didn't tell Yoko that when we bring our docket to you, forward our docket to the uh, uh, attorney general for the attorney general to give his advice on our docket. That should be you, your investigation, going to the attorney general because we don't report to the attorney general. OSP does not report to the attorney general. But the Yoko and police, they go to attorney general for advice. So the two of us are not the same. When we investigate and we find probable cause, we are powered by law to do our prosecution on mm. our own. Okay. So, Sami, let me understand what you wanted Yoko to do. Was it to do 
further investigation on the basis of the docket or to initiate a prosecution? Was to do investigations. It's the same way that Iyoko also does when they send us files. So let me give you a classical example of some file Iyoko send us. So they will send us a file with, and the file is a, is a very thin file with a summary that says that we we're doing an investigation to organize crime, blah, blah. And then in the course of interrogating the suspect, we came, it, it seemed to us that from whatever was happening, it falls largely under corruption. And so here are the details of the accused people and blah, blah, blah. So you can contact them and initiate investigation. We did not even send this. We sent a very a fat docket to them that contains probable evidence, not fishing evidence. Contain mm. probable evidence that if anyone is minded to act on it, you can act on it. All now, right. Just so another, another clarification. The okay. AG's office, just as a point, the AG's office in the grounds they gave in that advice had said that the file did not have an investigative report Court and further documentation to ground a money laundering prosecution. I'm quoting the construction. So they spoke, they used the, the word investigative report. You've given me some of the details of the, the, the docket and the documentation therein. So is it that the AG is misunderstanding what you wanted Yoko to do? Because they are saying that the docket did not have a report, an investigative report, and also documentation to ground a prosecution but you are saying you are asking for an investigation not a prosecution and there are two separate things what's your comment that is why when i started i was saying that what did iyoko send to the ag did iyoko send our docket to ag for advice remember we are a corruption investigative body and we're investigating for corruption so what is this business about investigative report that we should have given i'm just giving an example that we should have uh, we should have done a corruption investigation report and given that to uh, iyoko when iyoko doesn't have a mandate to investigate corruption or that we should have done the anti-money laundering investigative report ourselves when we don't have the mandate and then we should have put it on the docket and then it comes to ag now there's this fbi uh, thing they put in in the in the system that may confuse ordinary people or people who, may, who are not privy to it. The, when we handed over the docket to um, um, Iyoko, we just didn't leave it with Iyoko. We set up a committee that from our side and from Iyoko's side. Their side will, is headed by their deputy director. Our side is headed by director of investigations, and they're supposed to collaborate to assist Yoko in this investigation. That was the purpose of that standing committee. At no point, and I stated this, did even Yoko ask us that, oh, can you help us with the FBI report? Remember, these reports are not just thrown about everywhere because they come with confidentiality clauses and all that. And if it's sent to you, it's just sent to you. So even if Yoko wanted the FBI report, which by the way, I've said that it has been redacted in uh, the cover letter. And at the same time, we also have extensively given them all the caution uh, documentation statements from America. They already have it on file. So it's even, uh, uh, it's, it will be uh, unnecessary to even say uh, the FBI report again, because what the FBI report is essentially about the woman in America who we, are, we have already interrogated and she had uh, contradicted what Madame Dapa and her husband had told us. And I've told you that this is already on file for Yoko. So, even if they still wanted the FBI report, let's say, for uh, in Chile, say, say, and I'm not drawing, say, and quite, all they could do, they could have done was to trigger this conversation. And then it would have triggered another communication to the FBI to say that, um, do we have permission to send this docket, uh, send this report to the uh, Iyoko, or will you send it directly to Iyoko? You need to do that. It's, it's professional, it's ethical, it's lawful. But there was no such request. I don't know how many times you have to tell the media that there was no such request. So you see that the reasons being given, they keep changing. They keep, and I, and my, let me see. So, so, so I mean, let's take it one by one. So my, my, my question at this point will be, is, is it that the, the fact that you requested the Yoko to get involved created the impression that you had washed your hands of the case for which reason 
the AG is basing his advice on the fact that you did not make any findings of corruption and corruption related offenses because i am thinking is as a non-lawyer that anti-money laundering or money laundering is a corruption related offense it's not it's not a corruption offense if i am to be or it's, or it's not yep. a, so so that if okay, if, if, I, I if, if you bring in yoko to say I, I continue help. investigation is it that this was misunderstood to mean that you have finished your work and therefore once you didn't come up with any corruption or corruption related in your work there's nothing else to investigate could that be a misunderstanding i mean except you you want to obfuscate the fact and you want to confuse people that's when you can come by the theory you just as you've said all over the world money laundering is part of corruption however in ghana is separated to so the office of the special prosecutor and and this also i'm happy you brought this up because often a lot of Ghanaians are expecting us to do so many things which do not fall under our remit, but falls under police and Yoku and attorney general. For instance, causing financial loss to the state. It's not something that OSP can investigate. For instance, stealing. If a politician steals money, it is not for OSP to investigate. So although you might, Ghanaians call everything corruption, what is called corruption has clearly been defined by law. And so we are able to do only the things the law says we can do. So in this instance, if it was corruption and the AG is saying that his advice would have been based on corruption, then if it's corruption, we don't need to send it to Yoko because Yoko doesn't have a mandate to investigate corruption. And that reminds me, I'll use this as a clear example. When the Ministry of Roads and Highways um, said that Professor Adai, is it Adai? Yeah, Professor Adai had made allegations of corruption against them. They went to Iyoko. Now, as I've explained to you, Iyoko does not have a mandate to investigate corruption in Ghana. But Iyoko did not send a docket to Attorney General, uh, did not send that thing to Attorney General. Can you advise us, because Ministry of Rules and Highway has petitioned us to investigate a corruption matter. However, Yoko subsume it under what they call economic crimes, organized crimes, and investigate. But if you see their findings, everything pointed, pointed to corruption. But they didn't go to the AG because Yoko is primarily an investigative body. That is its own investigation without taking even orders from, from the AG. Although the AG can advise because it's, 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 it's an entity and directly under the Attorney General's office. So we sent this to them for them to investigate. And I'm saying that the file we sent to them cannot be a baseless or an empty file. It is a full file, unless they are saying that we ought to have added the fish to it. Fair, fair enough. And but, the but... predicate offense you talk about, if I can finish, is that I just gave you two instances where you can find a predicate offense. Because if your predicate offense is narcotics, then it has to go to narcotics control commission. If your predicate offense is corruption, it has to come to OSP. If the predicate offense is on another thing, now let me also add last and I nearly forgot. The docket we sent to Iyoko also contains tax, 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 tax returns of Madame Cecilia Dapa's husband. And if you go into the tax returns, you will notice that the tax he declared and what he told us that he earns, because the whole approach was to tell us that they get enough money and that they should have that money. They are inconsistent. Yoko has a, a and all this information was given to Yoko. All this information is on the file, Bernard. All this information is on the file. The all right. That we sent yeah, you. but so let I'm coming. So I'm coming. I just want to say that. So if Yoko was looking for or the uh, uh, AG is looking for a predicate offense, I've just given you even two instances where there is a predicate offense. You can investigate someone for tax evasion and do money laundering. So I'm saying that the I get you. So you're saying that the, the, the inconsistency of the amount and the taxes and the inconsistency between what the woman in the US said and what they said and the inconsistency between the work the deceased brother was to be doing and the amount of money claimed to have been gotten from his death. All those inconsistencies you believe are enough pointers for the Yoko to investigate if they want to establish money laundering because the age is also telling us that there needs to be some criminal issues associated with the exactly. properties the as the basis for investigating money laundering. So those three issues you yes, mentioned, you think are enough? It's not that I think. Just ask an average lawyer. 
he will tell you that these are possible offenses that you can charge somebody with and investigate. And it's not just mm. what I think. Fair enough. I'm giving you, I, I I get it. But finally, there are four uh, factors. So the Attorney General Department or Office, there's the Office of Special Prosecutor, there's Yoko, but there's also the Police CID. Now I know, or we are told that your office has also spoken to the Ghana Police Service to investigate the sources of found, uh, funds. So is, I'm, I'm trying to say that it's not a lost cause in the sense that the police CID has also been given some work to do. If you can confirm that and if they are doing it, if you know. We have not sent anything to Ghana Police to do anything. In fact, our investigation started from Ghana Police. You remember that there were some lady uh, maid servants, blah, blah, that they said had stolen money that brought all these things. That's the, yes. That's where we stand. That's what we needed. We needed the caution statement the police took from all those maids and arrests to establish a few other things. But up to now, we don't even have those um, statements and arrests. What you are saying is not OSP saying. It's the Attorney General that has said that the, the Attorney General that has said that um, the CID or the police are investigating the sources of funding um, by um, uh, by Madame Dapa. And the point we are making is that if the OSP's request to Yoko is baseless, then the AG's directive to the police is itself baseless. Because after all, all the heart of a money laundering investigation is ascertaining the source of the money and following the money. So this you are saying is rather the AG that's saying that in any case, the police is investigating. And so if the okay. police is investigating a source of money, there's no need for mm. Iyoko to investigate. So if you even take what the AG is saying, then you realize that the police should not also be investigating. But clarify, because so you, you also said that so far you have not received those statements from the police because as you rightly said, all of this began when we saw in the media that the police was investigating a question of stolen funds from the home involving the maid and some people. And you're telling me that the statements taken by the police since that time have not been made available to the OSP? Yes, we, we don't have it. But that brings a bigger question. And in the midst of this, what I'm worried about as a strategist is the, is the impression we are creating to the people of Ghana. I see the state of Ghana is hopeless and there is no remedy when there's a suspected crime. And it also brings bare the issue of collaboration between state agencies. There is a matter that civil society and the diplomatic mission are trying to ensure that all the law enforcement agencies are able to collaborate well. Sometimes the collaboration, in my view, and I'm being very candid, and I know some people may reprimand me for this, I feel that we don't have a deep collaboration. Let me give you an example. We needed the tax tax uh, returns of Madame Dapa and the husband, right? When we wrote to GRE for it, it took several weeks. We had to activate a portion of our, of our law which says that when a state entity refuses or decides not to be giving you the information you want, then that officer can be tried for a criminal offense. We have to activate that before we even got the tax information. When we went to, uh, when we went to um, Auditor General, we wanted the asset that was declared by Madame Dapa. Even in that, the, the, and this you can also afford them because they are sticking to their law and their law lists the law enforcement agencies that can request for such um, opening of such uh, um, asset declared. And you remember, OSP was formed just uh, four or five years ago. So at the time the asset declaration law was being passed, OSP was not in force. And so OSP is not listed as an entity there. And that even also shows some of the lapses in the OSP law, because when they were passing the OSP law, the lawmakers should have added OSP to that list of organizations that can request for the asset declared by a state entity. So right. people of Ghana, I want to tell you that the OSP is working, but the OSP faces a lot of uh, legislative and collaborative um, problems, which is that 
there are a lot of gaps in the OSP Act. And we appear to be the pioneers implementing the actual law that was passed by Parliament. And in trying to implement the actual laws, we are coming out to certain entities as if we are a non-conformist organization. But we have been created to be like that. It's not that the people in the OSV are the ones doing what they want. But the lawmaker was very deliberate that I'm creating another agency that uh, shouldn't have all the weaknesses of the existing law enforcement agencies, such as a reporting line to the executive. Ours was cut because it wanted us to be fairly independent to be able to do our job. The same law says that all the other agencies, police, IOKO, FIC, uh, Auditor General, uh, Shraj, they should all collaborate with us and give us the information we need to be able to do our job. That level of collaboration is still not very deep and active, but we are working on it because we cannot fight corruption without collaborators. We need the judiciary. We need all the other law enforcement agencies to collaborate with us. So at the end of the day, my point is that we should be able to come together as law enforcement agencies and say that, look, I was uh, Professor, uh, Professor Christopher Stone. He's a, he's a professor in Oxford. He, he once lectured me and said something that he told me, said something. It's not like the people in England or U.S. are not corrupt. They are. But what works for them and doesn't work for you is that when one person in the political class is found to have committed a crime, the whole system will give the person up. To be able to tell people that we don't accept this. And he said, it may be opposite in Africa. So the point I'm making is people should bear with us. The OSP is not old. Even the current special prosecutor is just two years in office and some months. He's had to grapple with two main things. One, to set up an office. And at the same time, Ghanaians are calling for blood because there's economic hardship. People think that um, people should be held accountable. And so they are not ready to even listen to any excuse. But at the same time, you also realize that we are without a lot of logistics and other things to be able to work independently and appropriately. And we are working on it. Mm. OSB is working hard mm. at becoming the anti-corruption agency and we need the support of everybody to be able to do this job sometimes our work will come out as if we have we have not we are not uh, we are clearing people but listen we are investigative and prosecutorial agency if we don't find enough evidence we cannot force feed the facts and go to court you are the same people who come and tell us that we are going to waste taxpayers money mm. by taking a case to court when Sorry. we knew that there were no grounds thank you you've made your case we appreciate your time Sam, Thank you very much. Samod, Samid Akun is the Director of Strategy and Communication at the Office of the Special Prosecutor.